What it is, what it do, Cyber World. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Brown, and this is the Ash Said It Show. I appreciate all of the love, all the support. Over 1,800, we are on the heels of 1,900 episodes. I don't even know where we're at in the number, but we're right on the heels of 1,900 episodes since 2014, which is incredible. And I appreciate you guys for all of your continuous support. And I, you know, it just really warms my heart. And because you guys love on me so much, I get to get some of my favorite authors back on my show. And we get to talk about some really awesome things, such as their new book. And so today is no different. I've got an amazing authoress with me today, the wonderful Susanna Marin. Hey, Susanna. (laughs) Hi there, Ash. How are you? I am great. How are you today? I'm good. I'm happy to be on your show. Thank you so much. Thank you. And yesterday was a big day. Yes, June the 27th, Maribel's Shadow dropped. It's official. It's out there. People are buying it up. How do you feel? Oh, it's so rewarding and thrilling. This is my 17th book, Ash. Can you believe it? (sighs) Cannot. So I sent you, including the nonfiction, and Susanna Marin is my pen name. Mm. And it's what I use for my fiction. And Maribel Shadow is a story that has been with me for so many years. And I'm so, so happy that it's you know, launched into the world now. Yes. Now, first off, I want to talk about that cover. That cover is very, it's captivating. It's elusive. It's got all the elements of uh, just, mm, just pulling me in. I love these type of novels. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about that cover. Well, this is actually the second book design um, Mm. for this book jacket design and I'm thrilled that you like it I do too I feel it really represents the you you know the whole story and who Maribel is Mm. so when I sold this book I thought that the jacket design would be very similar to my novels that came the the last two novels that Mm. came before this and then after talking with my agent and the editor we realized that it needed a very different type of cover. It needed one that created mood and intrigue and that it's really a mystery in many ways. You know, look at Maribel. Here she is. The sky is so gray and dark and Mm -hmm. she's standing on the pier alone with her arms out. I mean, you know, what lurks beneath is really something in this novel. Yes. Oh, my goodness. All right. So now we get to go into the inspiration behind this book project. You said that it was many, many years. It's been kind of like sitting with you. What was that like? Well, so I'm intrigued by mothers and daughters. And this is the story of three adult daughters, Maribel, the eldest, and then Caroline, her middle, the middle sister, and then Raleigh, the little sister. I'm really interested in family systems. I'm mm-hmm. interested in how mothers influence their daughters, and they teach us what to do and what not to do. Mm-hmm. And so, this family filled with secrets and lies and mm-hmm. ambition and social ambition, and ultimately, you know, what does betrayal mean for sisters? So, when I wrote this novel, I knew from the beginning that the sisters would be very close, but that it would be very complicated Mm -hmm. and that they would have a mother. Their mother is Lucinda, and I don't want to give anything away, but she plays favorites. She's Mm -hmm. really, she's a dicey mother. She she had these kids very young, Mm -hmm. and they came from the panhandle. And now they're in a very elite place. They're in Palm Beach. Mm. And they've managed to draw their way to the top. But if anyone ever knew what this family is really like, Mm. you know, they would be judged harshly. So since I'm a nonfiction writer, too, and for my nonfiction, you know, written under my real name, you know, Susan Shapiro Barish, I have been constantly researching how women are positioned in society as mothers and daughters and sisters and mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law and friends and rivals and lovers and 
how is it that women navigate a path and what is survival for women even if they have privilege even if they're educated Mm. the emotional longings for women and what we'll do to get what we need and so Mm. I took all of that and it's really part of this book okay right now can we talk a little bit about your writing process for this particular book, your 17th book, wow, congratulations again. <laughs> That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but what was the writing process with this? Because I've heard several authors talk about, you know, sometimes they'll start a book, they'll start writing a book, but then something else comes up, and then they come back to it two years later. What was that like for you? It was like that, yeah. <laughs> just as you described it. I always wanted to write the story of Maribel and her sisters and her and their mother. Mm. And I knew that I knew exactly what would happen at the beginning and the end. Mm. And so because and I've known that with my other fiction too. So knowing that the real trick is how do you get there? Mm. How do you get to, from the beginning, what right. we call the inciting incident mm. to the very end where everything is you know, realized and, you know, of course it's a surprise ending because that's my big thing. But, but I, I knew that, um, and I'll just tell you this, although, um, it's not a, it's not a spoiler because it happened so quickly in the book. So what happens is that, that Maribel's husband, who is just, you know, so handsome and accomplished Mm -hmm. that he, you know, and very involved with the family, and he is one of the big deals at the family business, he drowns within the first, like, 12 pages Mm -hmm. of this novel. And no one really, it turns out, knew who he was. Mm -hmm. So so because each sister's eyes, you know, Mm. really going on, what do these sisters really want and what will they do? You know, what is the price of winning? Mm. So uh, because I knew the theme, I would write one chapter at a time as almost a complete unit. Mm. I don't know what your other authors whom you interview tell you, but for me, each chapter was almost like a mini story that mm. that pushed this story, this novel ahead. Right. That's and I, so and of course, like, I, and of course, I keep an outline, and I write lots of notes and lots of rewriting <laughs> because, as as a writing teacher, you know, having taught writing, you know, at Marymount Manhattan for all those years, I always wanted my students to know, and I do believe this. I know you've interviewed authors who say, "Oh no, it just comes to me, and my characters guide me." But for me, it's much more deliberate. I, mm-hmm. I think that's the other school of writing for for novelists and nonfiction writers, and that is that you're very deliberate. You plot it out. So mm-hmm. that's my process. I do really plot it out. Gotcha, gotcha. That is awesome, awesome. So, what what came to you when you got that first proof? You know, you're you're proofing the book. You're you're looking at the cover. You're, you're seeing what needs to be changed. When it like, what went through your mind? When when I saw this design, the yeah. jacket design, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like the book was really represented on the cover, mm. and I don't know how often that happens so perfectly. Right. Because there's so many book covers. You know, we walk into a big a big bookstore. You know, a superstore like a Barnes and Noble. Or we walk into an indie bookstore and we look at all these book design, you know, all the book jackets, Mm -hmm. and we're drawn to them, you know, to some and not others. And you pick it up and you turn it over. And I felt like this really told the story. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the subtitle under Maribel's Shadow sisters shouldn't be playing these games that's exactly it. So I I really feel like it's all there. who do you think is going to really enjoy this particular book? Well, I hope that women of all ages will read it. I think women more than men, just to be honest. Yeah. But, of course, there is a larger reading population among women than men, yeah. just statistically. Um, but I, but because this is a multi-generational story, and it was very important to me that I had young women and I also had, you know, older women, you know, mm-hmm. so it's Lucinda, the mother, 
and it's Aunt Bryant, another character, and then the three daughters, and um, Caroline, the middle sister, has two daughters of her own who have some voice in this book. So I really like to look at women of all ages in terms of what they do to get through. Mm. You know, what, what steps do we take and what do we protect and why? And, you know, women have secrets and women are really good at it. And so the idea that this this carefully guarded family could, you know, so, so quaffed and elegant and how they really rose from, you know, not having money. And here they are in this very luxurious, beautiful town. Mm-hmm. But what really lurks? So I hope that that women of all ages will want to read that because you can identify with one of the characters by age and their story. I agree. Last but certainly not least, what advice would you have for the next generation of female writers? I think that writing is such a tough occupation Mm -hmm. and that there's so much discouragement and so much talent, as in all of the arts, Ash, it, it yeah. isn't just writing. Yeah. I'm sure it's for theater and dance and, you know, all of, all of it, that, that so much talent goes unnoticed. Mm-hmm. And so I would urge any young writer to just keep going. Mm-hmm. If you need a day job, have a day job, yeah. but do not put off your writing. Mm-hmm. Do not say I'm too tired after a long day at work. Make sure that you find at least an hour mm-hmm. a day somehow to write and never give up never give up i love it if you guys haven't already (laughs) gone to the website you've gone to amazon you check your local bookstores go and look up maribel shadow susanna thank you so much for coming through absolutely love your energy i love what you bring to the table and i love you diversifying just the entire industry so continue doing great things and um thank you so much (laughs) not a problem and you definitely have to come back because i know that you're working on some other stuff i know we didn't talk about that today but i know Um, you got some other stuff on the on the stove cooking there Susanna. i I know it's there (laughs) (laughs) so you 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 have it right i'm always working mm -hmm. so you definitely got to be back and let everyone know the best way to get the book so you go to your indie bookstore and ask for Maribel Shadow by Susanna Marin or go to Amazon or barnesandnoble.com or your big bookstore around the corner. It should be available everywhere. All right. Sounds like the plan. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. Keeping in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do. You look them square in the face, you tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for, the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys.